There are super intriguing new studies that have blown my mind when it comes down to being able to build muscle, even in relatively extreme deficits. Even with relatively low protein, it's totally mind-boggling and it's flipped everything on its head. But now we're starting to understand like, how this could work. Like, even if you're fasting, potentially being able to build muscle or in an extreme caloric deficit where you just, I need to drop a bunch of fat, but I don't want to lose all my muscle. Anyway, it's wild. So first off, there was a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Took a look at the relationship between hypertrophy, muscle building, and weight loss. So what they did is for 90 days, they had them consume a super low calorie liquid diet, 803 calories per day. So I don't recommend that you do this. That's extremely low. And then they divided them into two groups. One group stayed sedentary and the other group resistance trained. They took muscle biopsies at the beginning at baseline and then again at 90 days. Okay, they found on average, both groups lost a lot of weight. Okay, they lost about 35 pounds. Okay, 76-ish percent or so ended up being from fat. So they lost a lot of fat, but on average, it looks like they lost a lot of muscle too, right? But when they did the muscle biopsies, they did a cross-sectional area of slow twitch muscle and fast twitch muscle, so type one and two. The group that resistance trained actually built muscle just by stimulating, just by working out. They were in a ridiculous deficit with ridiculously low protein even. What this tells us, and you could turn off this video now and have your takeaway if you really wanted to, but I think you should learn more. Resistance training, the stimulus, is the number one thing for building the muscle. You can see that clear as day that on an 800 calorie diet, not that I recommend you do it, if you're resistance training, you are gonna potentially build or at least preserve more muscle than if you did nothing. But let's address this really big piece that's very important and that is protein. So with protein, there was a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. I've talked about this study before. It had subjects go on a 40% caloric deficit. Okay, so they restricted calories like super, super aggressively. Like that's a pretty intense deficit. But they had one group consume 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, low protein group, and another group consumed 2.4 grams per kilogram of body weight, the high protein group. Their calories were matched. They ate the same amount of calories. This is extremely important that I stress this. Same amount of calories. The high protein group actually built muscle. The high protein group had an increase in lean body mass of 1.2 kilograms. The low protein group, none, it was like negligible. Okay, well get this, the high protein group also lost significantly more fat. Now remember, they were matched for calories. I know that people say calories in, calories out is all that matters, but you do need to break it down a little bit more into macros because they ate the same amount of calories, but they ate more protein. That means they were eating less of fats and carbs, but more protein, same amount of calories. They built more muscle and burned more fat. Oh, by the way, they were in a 40% deficit. So yes, you can build muscle, but you know we need to understand more. So we're gonna break this down even more. If you're in a caloric deficit, protein being high is critical. That means even snacks should be focused on protein. Now I've put a link down below for Thrive Market. If you wanna shop at Thrive Market, that's a 30% off discount link. People think that it's just like a place to get pantry staples. No, you can get like meat snacks, like chomps, you can get Rome sticks, you can get things that are high in protein through Thrive and that's a 30% off discount link. So if you loaded up your entire cart with candidly, not the cheapest protein snacks because protein snacks can add up, you can save 30% off your entire first order through Thrive, plus you get a free $50 gift. So it's a membership-based grocery store. So when you log in there, you can sort by different diet types. So say you sort by like baked goods or you sort by snacks and then you can sort by meat snacks. So you can sort by sugar-free or gluten-free. It's the easiest shopping experience and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. But let's be real, like everyone's trying to pinch some pennies and if you save 30% off your whole grocery cart, trust me, that adds up. You're talking like a month's worth of groceries. So use that link down below in the top line of the description. So people poke holes in protein kind of studies with this and they say, well, this is only gonna be effective in a deficit if someone is untrained, like if someone's never really worked out before. Then of course, as soon as they work out, they're gonna have a, a stimulus and they're gonna build muscle, newbie gains, right? Well, let's look at some data in trained individuals. There's a study published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise. This took a look at physique athletes, natural physique athletes. What they did is they had them go through like their normal sort of contest prep and they put them on a very specific diet. So in this case, they had them consume either 2.5 grams 
of protein per kilogram of body weight or 0.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. They put them into a severe deficit and they had them go about pretty intense resistance training for eight weeks. Granted, these are already very experienced resistance trained athletes. Well, what do you know? The people that had more protein actually increased lean body mass and seemed to have better fat loss too. In fact, it wasn't anything negligible. It was 2.1 kilograms of muscle built versus 0.6 kilograms of muscle built. We're talking upwards of five or six pounds here. Like that is a lot of muscle to gain in a similar caloric range just by adding in more protein in a very trained individual. Now, another study that was really interesting that looked at a severe deficit was super wild. This one was actually a case study. So it looked at an individual, okay? It was published in the Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Science, or Exercise Metabolism, rather. With this case study, what they did is they took one person. So we can't take this to the bank, but it's still kind of an extreme example. They had them go through their 32-week contest prep, and they had them eat 55% of their diet being protein. And what they found is that even though this person went as low as 1130 calories at points, she decreased her total fat mass by 55%, not her body fat percentage, but decreased fat by 55% and increased her lean body mass one and a half percent. Again, it could be an outlier, right? But the reason that I mentioned this is because it's an extreme example of someone that's highly trained. I have a theory that people that are more trained and more resistance trained actually respond even better in a caloric deficit because A, maybe their bodies will hold on to that muscle easier because they've established that that muscle is just sort of part of their being. But additionally, when that muscle is stimulated, then maybe they're actually getting a bigger effect because there's more metabolic demand with more tissue. It's just a theory, but the data also tends to back it up. But, and this is a big but, there was a study that was published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise that was published in 2022. In the first analysis, in the direct study, they found that restricting calories impaired the ability to build muscle from resistance training. Additionally, there was no change in strength though. So then there was a second arm of this, the second analysis, which was looking at you know, larger bodies of data. And they actually found that this data supported the same, supported that a deficit decreased the ability to build muscle. It killed the gains a little bit. It didn't stop the building of muscle, but it decreased it. But again, no change in strength. I'm not like super smart, but I can tell you that like if you lose muscle, you would lose strength. Like where are you getting the strength from if you lost the muscle? Like your bones, your eyeballs, like it doesn't really work like that. So there's a lot of things that pop into my head. Like, well, was it just like water volume that was lost in the lean body mass because these people were in a deficit? Because the macronutrient loss had to come from somewhere and maybe it was carbohydrates. It's funny because I've seen this study floating around social media and people talk about it saying like, oh, you shouldn't fast or nope, don't be in a deficit. It's so weird. Like we're actually telling people to not be in a deficit now. I've seen multiple posts. The problems that I have with this study is that people are taking it the wrong way. Of course, if you decrease calories aggressively and you continue to do that for a long period of time, at some point it's going to hinder your muscle growth. You cannot just decrease your calories 80% forever and they make muscle out of thin air. It's still matter, it's still volume. The bottom line is that this study didn't say that restricting calories makes it so you can't build muscle. It was saying like the more that you restrict calories, the less muscle you will build. And that is kind of accurate. But the big problem is that they didn't even look at protein in these studies. So we have no idea, like did they restrict 500 calories from protein? Because we've established that stimulus and protein are the most important things. So if we don't know how much protein they're consuming, like if they had gotten adequate amounts of protein or even more protein, would it have canceled out the negative effect? I would reckon so, it probably would. At the end of the day, what we have to look at is muscle protein synthesis is driven by a stimulus and a positive nitrogen balance. Calories do not seem to matter too much. Be in a deficit, build muscle, that's fine. Be in a surplus, build muscle, that's fine. But do what makes you feel good. I'll see you tomorrow.